Hello everyone and welcome back to x 11 where I'm going to try out a new sound package for the SR71. We don't have it installed right now. It's called FMOD SD Series SR71 Blackbird by Sim Acoustics. And it was off of the x store. It was on sale, that's why I got it. Um, I want to get back to flying the SR71 in here. Something that obviously we can't do in Flight Sim. Uh, so x 11 will have to be it. Especially for the fast, fast stuff and experimental stuff, it'll be better. Uh, experimental stuff is not going to fly right in in uh, flight sim. In fact, uh, until recent until the recent update, they didn't even have the ability to have canards, and they figured that out because uh, somebody uh, India Fox Techo released uh, Rutan Long EZ, and they had to add canard capability. Even then, I don't think they're modeling the canards right. I'm not sure. So. Experimental stuff like the SR-71 is probably dodgy in Flight Sim 2020 right now, whereas Laminar Research's x 11 was meant for this sort of thing, and so we'll see how things work uh, with uh, the more out there planes, and I'll focus on that as far as x 11. But first, I do want my SR-71 to sound right. This is what it sounds like. I've turned up the volume all the way in the sim, and this is what it sounds like exterior. This is the idle sound. There's default, default, and then I'll compare to the to the new package, and then interior. This is what it sounds like, and I've got track IR enabled, as you can see. So we've got a fan going, and then the sound of the engines, basically, and then occasionally there's another tick that happens. But okay, let's uh, throttle up and see how that sounds. Sounds sort of muddy to be honest. So I don't know, maybe the sound package isn't worth it and I'm wasting my time with it, who knows? We'll see. I do need to actually see what speed I'm going at. Okay, we can go off. With the Vulcan rendering that is in the game right now, it's much easier to fly the SR-71 at high frame rates. So that's one of the attractive things. You can sort of see the sim being silky smooth right now. Or at least by my standards. Hopefully the recording turns out the same way. We should head towards uh, LA though. The scenery around Edwards Air Force Base isn't particularly taxing. And the scenery that we have here is US Ortho Photos for California by Fork Boy. So Fork Boy 2 I think. And uh, right now the 3J FPS functionality is off. So it's just the natural scenery frame rate. I wonder if they ever fix the fuel gauge. I don't think so. That'd be ticking down right now. They never fix the fuel gauge on the SS-71 in this. Maybe, maybe they could put that on the to-do list. I don't know. Seems important. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was an annoyance for me uh, during my attempt to fly this around the world. No, oh, this is an awful sound. Why am I getting this sound now? Yeah, that's not a friendly sound at all. So this seems like the steady state sound for it. Inside the cockpit. Whoops, I'm slouching. Uh, we're going 470 knots at 17,000 feet. Close to Mach 1. Really close. 
but we'll descend and see how the frame rate is at lower level and let's do some afterburnering to get the sound of that so afterburner off afterburner on To be careful not to overspeed the plane. 800 knots is it, which is a lot, you know. Okay, let's see, where's downtown LA anyway? Over there, okay, there we go. Let's go down, so I've got throttle down. There's 50% uh, throttle on my, on my throttle. Uh, what it is in terms of RPM or whatever is something different. And let's take a look at the frame rates now. Now we're at 15, 16 ish because of all the scenery it has to load and the buildings and everything. I'll turn on 3J FPS and we get some of that back. Um, it's set to a minimum of 20, so we'll just call the excess scenery to get us to 20. I'm going 560 knots. <laughs> so, you know. There's downtown LA, 20 frames per second, but it's choppy. We're at 3,000 feet. The plane doesn't, you know, do a whole lot of G effects like I would expect it to do when I'm pulling G's. I also decided to get XP realistic, but I'll test that separately and see what it does for those kinds of effects. Okay, so we've heard the sound for the SR-71 by default. Let me throw in the FMOD package and see how that works out. Okay, so now this is what the interior sounds like at idle. Definitely a different sound. And I'm turning my head uh, to give a sense of how the sound varies. Okay, and outside. This is the idle sound of the engines. Now I don't know how they captured the sounds. Presumably there are some recordings of the SR-71 and they can approximate it. Okay, throttle up. Well that's different. how it is in the cockpit. Throttling back off of afterburner. Now they have a pressure suit variant to the sound configuration. I'm not using that. But you can use a pressure suit version. You just have to change the name of the sound configuration from the, from the helmet one. Uh, this one that's underscore helmet, then you can change that to the main sound configuration and just uh, change the current sound configuration to backup or something. So, but I'm not using the pressure suit variant one right now because I generally find, find that irritating. Especially on a long trip. I think we'll head towards Arizona this time instead of uh, Los Angeles. So, actually, it's this way. I've got US or for Oh, that's the sound. Uh oh. Uh, what was that sound? So now it has new sounds. <laughs> I don't know what that sound was, and I don't know why everything is red. 
I guess it was G-forces. I was pulling quite a few Gs there. Well, I guess we could test that theory. Let's go faster and pull some Gs, huh? Yeah. It's G-forces. Okay. Don't know why stuff turned red, though. Uh, I mean, it, it could just be the lights on that happens, but I, I don't know what turned on the lights. Does uh, does that indicator automatically turn on the lights? I'm not sure. So it is from the front. We're nowhere near the speed of sound yet. We'll climb and we'll try and get it to uh, its normal flight regime. We'll see if it can do that. Well, I think it's certainly better as far as sound is concerned, and I, I think they said that all sorts of stuff had custom sounds, I don't know. I mean, that's certainly making a sound, I don't know if that changed or not since I didn't test that. This side panel one doesn't seem to have a sound. This one does. That one does. That one does. This one doesn't? Interesting. Oh, maybe we should test toil stall behavior if there's any sound associated with that. Oh, that's a stall warning. And how is that different from the G-Force? That's the same warning. Same system. So, after we're on or off, it sounds like this. This is off. And then when it goes on... So, fairly mild difference in here overall. You hear the click of the afterburner, but that's about... And then a little bit more energy. Here there's a bunch of Okay, let's see about breaking the sound barrier now. Mach uh, 0.9. And Mach 1. We lost the uh, altitude. Uh, it's more decisive that way anyway. And we're going back up now. Mach 1.1. So, hardly any change in here, as you would expect. Up here. I don't know if the... I mean, I, I sort of go with the DCS world view that in front there probably shouldn't be any sound. Well, okay, there was a sort of different sound at the mop room, I think, right there. There. I think uh, there's a flyby effect. Why? Why is it so high? Oh, there's the sonic boom. That's a really high. Okay. Let's see, this is more in level with it. All right, that's satisfactory. Mainly, we're looking at shift one and shift two, and shift two is better. Oh, I probably shouldn't go like that. Okay, we need to probably go back into the cockpit. Actually, at slower speeds, it should be creaking, right? Because, like, it leaked fuel and everything. Wow, we lost 10,000 feet just like that. 65,000 feet, Mach 2.72. 
seems to have not loaded the next chunk. I guess we'll stay in here if it's not going to load the scenery properly. 70,000 feet and climbing. I'm trying to keep it above Mach 2.5, but it's tough. We've had this sort of problem with it before. It doesn't perform exactly the way I think we all expect it to. But maybe there's some sort of peculiarity that I'm missing. Like, you know, exactly how we're supposed to climb. Anyway, sound test wise, I think we've got what we were looking for. Now, I gotta say, uh, I'm annoyed by the scenery in front of us not loading properly. That sort of takes the fun out of it. Yep, I'm not coaxing this too much faster right now. So, for now, I'll leave it here. So, this is the sound pack from Sim Acoustics for the SR71 judge for yourself whether it's worth it I mean it's tough to say really because it depends on how much you expect to fly the SR-71 and for me uh, my main concern right now is if I fly the SR-71 around the world let's say again uh, am I going to have this sort of scenery problem so it has a lot less to do with with the SR-71 and its sound pack and more to do with X-Plane 11 loading the scenery properly at this point. Whether I think it's worth it or not. One last sonic boom. And that's what that is. I could get endless amusement from hearing the sonic boom on the flyby. Honestly. But I've got to figure out what's going on with the scenery here. So that is a different issue. And with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.